their business model. My sense is, is that in many cases the difficulty to integrate uh, sustainability into business models is related to the fact that uh, practitioners tend to uh, stick and to remain or to uh, tackle the issue remaining in uh, an implementation mode. So they would say, okay, let's, let's try to do uh, sustainability, let's try to build you know, the unit, the metrics, the system, the tools, uh, and, and so on. And they tend to assume that the path towards becoming a sustainable company is somewhat known, so that they just you know that there are some steps that need to be taken. I would argue that a key aspect uh, is instead to switch from an implementation mode to a learning mode, saying that you need to um, experiment, uh, get out of the comfort zone, uh, try get out of the routine, and do things differently. And in your experience, having helped a number of large multinational enterprises, global companies, in you know, you know, engaging in the, into the, into this pattern, I mean, what do you think uh, uh, the companies need to do, and how do you think, uh, uh, and how do you help them, trying to achieve uh, you know this this switch and to to move and to and to actually uh, um, experiment in this area. Great, thank you. Well, well, first of all, my apologies for just being on the screen. And as I was saying earlier, I can just see your screen behind you, and I do look something like a prisoner. All I need is a little number uh, underneath me. Um, and, and secondly, let me say how envious I am of you, um, since I'm not there, and uh, it's going to be an absolutely brilliant couple of days. Uh, so... Uh, Whatever I can say, uh, I hope is helpful, um, but I would rather I was there. So, so to, your, to your question, um, firstly, I think that you know, we can kind of broadly distinguish approaches that have been taken by companies that are at the optimizing end of the spectrum and changes that are, if you like, at the disruptive end of the spectrum. Um, and, and what we've seen over the past 10, 15 years is a professional community, both inside the business community and outside of the business community, emerging largely to deal with optimization issues. So metrics and codes and procedures and management incentives, um, most types of training, although not all, are, are, are more or less geared to squeeze more sustainability blood out of the existing business model. Um, and that is a good thing. Yeah, so we shouldn't demean it or reduce it, but we also have to understand um, its limits and its boundaries, and potentially uh, its negative unintended consequences. Um, the, 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 then you look at the sort of the, the, the sort of the people who don't really do anything like Ed and me um, and, and we talk more about disruptive change uh, and, and we talk about new business models um, you know we talk you know if you're Nick Stern today you're talking about you know a new industrial model for the world you know the, the, there's a whole kind of language which has evolved that has the appearance of disruption major change in the way individual businesses and business systems and markets operate. Um, but, but the gap between these two ends, the sort of the narrative on disruptive change and the practice and the practice on optimization, it is very extreme. Um, and and with, with possibly one or two exceptions, exceptions perhaps of some of the companies who are in the room with you today, um, you know, I, I would say yeah, there is very little happening by the major incumbent companies um, in, in the disruptive change area. And, and that, I guess, brings me then to the, the second piece of your question, um, you know, which is this sort of mixture of kind of learning and, you know, learning and optimization, if you like, and, and my own experience in working with individual companies. And, and firstly, I, I think I would say, um, and there will be better uh, corporate historians in the room than me, but, but I think it's 
it, 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 it's safe to assume that the vast majority of incumbent companies won't make it to the next round. You know, so, you know, with huge respect to the companies in the room, the majority of them won't exist in 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and, and that may be a good thing. You know, we, we, we shouldn't be overly attached to the companies we work for, apart from the pension plans that will hopefully pay us off at the end of the day. Um, you know, we, we have to understand that historically very few companies make it through two major innovation waves. And this is a, an innovation wave of a size, um, you know, that is, you know, is, yeah, is very rare. It is very rare, although it obviously depends slightly on which sector and, and so on and so forth. Um, but for the individual companies, you know, that, that immediately come to mind that I'm working with and without particularly naming a, anyone or other, you know, the, the experiences that seem interesting as they tend towards the more disruptive end are for companies that have very, very sophisticated and integrated procedures and processes, you know, real process companies. You know, I would think of GE as an example of that. Um, they are almost incapable of experimenting in disruptive change in the heart of the business. And so they will tend to develop, you know, in American lingo, sort of skunk works models on the side that are testing out different possible pressure points on the business model and trying to understand sort of in a corner how they may shift the business in significant ways if they are responded to in a variety of different possible manners. You know, that might be things like human rights, it might be things like significant technology shifts, it may be things like trade policy, you know, all of which are part and parcel of the sustainability equation. Yeah, and, and then there's sort of a different class of company, and I would probably say Nike is an example of that, um, you know, which is sort of very high performance. It is the opposite to GE. You know, it, it, it has the attention span of a P. Um, it, 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 all of its internal incentives encourage rapid innovation. Um, Consistency in delivery actually becomes more the challenge for these very, very high, almost over-adrenaline innovation companies. And, and they will tend to try and integrate disruptive learning into the business model as it runs. Yeah, sometimes with amazing and fantastic consequences and sometimes with less. Um, and, and so, Ronaldo, maybe just to bring it to a close, because it was just a kind of an opening shoot, you know, it, it is interesting to distinguish you know, different kinds of companies that can experiment in disruptive change models in distinct ways given their existing culture, which is partly a function of the technology and the products and the services that they sell. It's partly a function of the culture and the companies and the countries that they come from. But it's also just partly a uniqueness. You know, there are many you know, apparel and shoe companies that are low innovators and have more of a process discipline like GE and to some extent vice versa. So you know, there's, there's some mobility between these different cultural forms and to see how the location of innovation, the location of learning, particularly when you move away from optimization towards disruption, um, is dealt with in a very different way. You know, amongst the high performance, amongst the ones that I would put out there as companies we can learn significantly from.